Greetings and welcome to a video lesson where I'll be teaching you about top 10 most important ideas for the white pieces in everyone's beloved London system. The first one. Imagine that your opponent has played c5, which is a very common move at all levels in the black setup against the London system. The purpose of this move is not only to increase the amount of pressure they're building in the center, but to prepare queen b6. And this queen b6 often hits this pawn on b2 annoyingly, since white has moved the bishop away, it's a natural target right now. And white typically responds with pawn to c3. It is part of the setup so that if black plays queen to b6 and hits the pawn, now your queen can comfortably go to the b3 square. In this position, if black, for example, plays c4, then your queen can go back to c2. And in this middle game, your breaks or your main plans are going to be pawn to b3 or pawn to e4. Of course, you can prepare pawn to e4 with knight to d2 and such, but in the middle game, those are going to be the main go-to ideas for you. Now, it's important also to know what to do and what are the advantages if black accepts the queen and takes it. Now, very important after c takes d4 in these structures is not to take with the c-pawn. If you're going to take with the c-pawn, you have these double isolated pawns, and they're considered to be weak. However, if you take with the e-pawn, these two are considered to be part of the big group, and that's very strong. They're not considered to be weak. Pawn to b4 is going to be supported by the pawn to c3. You can gain space on the queen side with b4, b5, make it annoying for the black knight, and also have semi-open a file where you're able to apply the pressure on the black's pawn on a7. So once again, against c5, we play c3. In order to queen b6, we can react with queen c2 or queen to b3. Let's go with the next one. Very often when we have bishop on f4, your opponent is going to be playing bishop to d6. So one of the main ideas in the London here is to play bishop g3. Instead of capturing and allowing black to develop a piece, we're telling them that if you're going to be accepting the exchange and take on g3, we can take with the h pawn and now have the open h file that we could utilize. Later, we hope, of course, to apply more pressure with bishop to d3. And typically, we hope to castle queen side. And later, even if possible, we want to establish our knight on e5 and expand on the king side with f4 and g4. Now, I have to say that in some cases, you're going to be castling short or the king side. And this structure is absolutely safe for your king. So if you see that center or the queen side is getting opened and it's dangerous to castle to the left side of the board, it's fine in the structure to be castling to the right side of the board. Now, another idea that is very common by black is to try and harass your bishop on f4 with moves like knight to h5. Against knight h5 with white, you often want to have bishop to g5 response. So a rule of thumb is that you're going to be playing the move h3 when if your opponent plays knight to h5, you no longer can go with bishop to g5. So the purpose of h3 is to give you this square. However, if bishop to g5 was available, like if black didn't have this battery, h3 was not necessary. Because a lot of the students of mine are asking, when exactly do they play h3? And the answer is when the g5 square is covered. Let's move to the next one. That's very common among uh, beginner to inter intermediate levels. So the setup that they're using is often with knight to c6 in front of the c-pawn. So they're leaving this pawn behind, and that's considered to be usually dubious among the d4, d5 systems. In these positions, I would like you to not go for the typical c3, but to go with c4 and knight to c3. Look, if they're going to play c5, you need to somewhat protect d4 more times because there's going to be a lot of pressure there. Plus, they're not going to be threatening queen to b6. You don't need to react with queen b3. Here, pawn to c4 is protected. It's risk-free. And knight to c3 and c4 combination is just better for the central control than pawn to c3 and knight to d2. In the middle game, you hope to apply pressure on the backward c pawn. You will hope to get the rook. And at some point, you may even hope to open up the C file at the right moment, not prematurely, and apply pressure against the backward pawn over there. Now, what's hard for players usually, or what makes them scared, is this forking situation that black is trying to create on C2. So over here, we simply have queen to A4, 
and it's a double attack which forces black to go back and if they're doing this a moment later like for example they play e6 with the idea that if they go knight before now this doesn't do much since the knight is protected so at this moment we're simply going to be playing rook to c1 and so we get the c2 square protected if they're going to go there anyways we'll have sacrificed a rook for two pieces and white is considered to be objectively winning even in that position so a combination of c4 plus knight to c3 and regular development will give you space advantage and in the middle game pressure along the c5 next idea if your opponent is playing early bishop f5 the way i would like you to try and attempt to punish that is with move c4 followed by knight c3 and queen to b3 Knight to c3 can and sometimes may not be included. So, for example, pawn to c4, let's say they go e6, no, knight to c3, let's say they're solidifying the d5 pawn with c6. Here, I want you to play queen to b3. This queen to b3 often targets b7, which is vulnerable after they have left that pawn with the bishop, say if they played bishop f5 like in this position. And a lot of the times, all possible defenses for black to be guarding that pawn on b7 are having some long-term drawbacks or some consequences. So a typical move here that black could make, which is not good in my opinion, is queen to b6. And at this moment, we're learning about idea number two. That the pawn move c4 to c5 to hit the queen, gain space, is typically good when in the middle game black is unable to strike with e5. So if you see that you have good solid control in the middle game over the square, then c5 is good, especially if your bishop is outside the pawn chain. But that's always the case in the London system. And if they're doubling your pawns, that is totally fine. They're not isolated. They're part of the group because c pawn is adjacent. You have the semi open a file for your rook, and you're going to be expanding with b4 and b5. And what's nice is that this pin along the a file will allow you to easily get b5 even though it's attacked by two pawns because they cannot take with the a pawn so you can generate really a lot of counterplay in these positions uh, by pushing the b pawn and just getting that activity on the queen side this bishop on f4 a lot of times also harasses b8 square so that even if the b file gets opened later they cannot be using that for their rooks so white is considered to be much better in these positions so remember if early bishop f5 happens i want you to play c4 and queen b3 with or without knight to c3 to attack b7 and when queens are facing each other i would like you to consider c5 and play this move when you have undisputed control over e5 and don't worry about the double pawns next idea it is very common in the london system to want to control e5 square and often we even want to establish the knight there Especially if your opponent, for example, say, was playing something like this, so you castled earlier, and they're threatening to play pawn to e5, you can prevent that by playing knight to e5. If they ever take, you would be taking with pawn and gaining space advantage on the king side, restricting the f6 square pieces like bishop or the knight, and this can be followed often with a king side attack. So you can imagine with this bishop over here, queen goes to g4, h5, your bishop can then be rerouted to h4, and you're facilitating that wonderful kingside attack. So knight to e5, and this is often going to be supported by the pawn to f4. If black ever takes, you're going to be having the open f file that now you can use for the attack by the rooks. Next idea. When we already have played c4 and c5, uh, beginner to intermediate level players may end up in something like this, I don't want you to play a typical London move like bishop to d3 or bishop to e2. Instead, I want you to go for the pin. And over here, if your opponents play a6, you can definitely damage their pawn structure with bishop c6 and follow it up with attack against that weak pawn on c6. So don't worry that typically uh, this is not part of your system. I want you to not play mechanically and always think if your opponent changes something in the position, perhaps there is a better move that tries to facilitate, capitalize on the mistake that he has made. So if he plays knight to c6 with the pawn blocked, and have the space advantage, the better square for the bishop is actually here on b5 and applying pressure against it. Flexibility, being receptive is good. Let's take a look at this one. You just had the knight on e5 and it got taken. 
The question is how do you take back? In the London system, we already saw that we often want to take back with the pawn. This doesn't only kick away the f6 square, uh, the knight from there, where we're going to hope to get an attack, but this also creates this d4 square for our pony. So later you can move knight f3, knight d4, and after the f6 knight is kicked away, we can go queen h5 with sacrificing ideas on the h6 square. You're facilitating that attack by gaining the space advantage on that side of the board. The next idea that is very important to know are the sacrifices on h7. The bishop looking at h7 usually is what facilitates the attacks for the white pieces in the London system, especially if you still have the queens on the board. And this is an example of that. Black has just played a developing move, and we have bishop h7, this is called the Greek gift, then knight to g5, and the queen goes from a4 to h4. Typically, queen goes to h5 when it's on d1, but this time queen moved from left to right out of the board and checkmate is not avoidable so white is going to win the game with queen h7 so watch out for these h7 sacrifices let's take a look at another example where bishop h7 is going to work this time a little bit differently because our pawn is on h4 and we haven't castled which means that if we land for example a knight on g5 and it gets taken this helps us to apply pressure against h7 with the rook as well. So here we can play bishop h7, king takes, then we have queen h5, very interesting. And in this position, we can play knight to f3 and go to the g5 square. And the idea is that even though knight is the one that supports the queen on h7, if they capture it, we can capture with the h pawn and now the rook is supporting that queen move to h7. So for example, in the game, f6 was played and white goes knight g5 anyways. Yeah, like it's the Shanklin's uh, rule. If they're preventing your idea, ask yourself, maybe I can do it anyways. So takes, takes, and white is creating this mating net over here. We had bishop g5 in the game. We have captures. And so on, white made black resign with queen h7, and rook was lifted, and the attack continues. White objectively here is completely winning. So the h7 sacrifices. And last but not least, uh, when they're creating these three pawns in the center, which is not only common in the London system, uh, it could happen in other openings as well, instead of going for the typical, but actual an error, d takes e5, taking the centralized pawn here, the position is quite fine for black. I would say that I would pick black myself due to the superior center, but objectively is around equal. Instead, we're taking on c5, leaving black temporary with the mobile center that we're striking against. Another principle that helps us here is that opponent's king is in the center, so we want to blow up the lines and file so that we could attack it. And here we have an example line. For example, takes, and bishop takes e4. I think this is fantastic position for white. White has the better bishop. We have pressure against e5. If we can castle uh, queen side, we hope to get rook to d5 and even more pressure on e5. Objectively and practically, white is better. If you enjoyed the video, consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. Thank you for watching this video. Leave the comment on what should be the next opening that I can cover the top 10 ideas in. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.